Yuji Itadori is a character that since the beginning of the series has been a monster. While his power level relative to the rest of the verse has wavered, one thing has always remained true. Yuji is a sorcerer full of potential and a character that has shown the inklings of being a monster. The manga's most recent chapters have put this on full display, but even before then, Yuji showed the makings of becoming a complete powerhouse. In the very beginning of the series, we see that he is brave enough and powerful enough to take on a cursed spirit through the use of brute force and no cursed energy. We see in this same chapter that his body is able to not only survive the effects of Sukuna incarnating into him, but he was also strong enough to suppress the literal king of curses through sheer force of will. And on top of all of that, Gojo Satoru, the strongest character in the manga, took interest in Yuji and his development. Much like Kinji Hikari, Yuta Okotsu, and Megami Fushiguro, Yuji was one of the chosen few that Gojo thought had the potential to not only reach the level of special grade, but surpass it and Gojo altogether and create a new class of sorcerer that surpasses anything seen in the series before. Clearly, from the very beginning of the manga, Gege intended for Yuji to reach levels that are on par with the best of the best. Even when looking at Yuji's ability to manipulate cursed energy, the very foundation of the power system, we see that he's always had immense potential for it. When starting his cursed energy training, we see that his pace of learning actually outstrips what Gojo expected of him, causing Gojo to mention how quickly he's picking things up. And this immense learning speed is also demonstrated and consistently shown when Toto attempts to show Yuji how to actually manipulate the flow of his cursed energy, and it's put on display just how quick of a learner he truly is, not only in terms of his cursed energy manipulation, but also in terms of his ability to fight in general close quarters combat. This impromptu training changed Yuji's maximum output, and in Toto's words, was the push needed to take on special grade cursed spirits, something which Toto says Yuji wouldn't have been able to do if he stuck to his old ways and stuck to relying on Divergent Fist. This shows that Yuji has always been quick on the uptake and was able to evolve before Toto's eyes, even bringing Yuji's skill level to the point of being able to pull off a Black Flash, one of the highest level abilities in the Jujutsu Kaisen verse. And Yuji doesn't just pull off a Black Flash against a special grade once or twice or even three times, but Yuji pulls off five Black Flashes in one fight against Hanami, four of them being consecutive, meaning that on the first day of even utilizing his cursed energy properly, Yuji was able to tie the record of most Black Flashes consecutively. He's even able to pull off a Black Flash in his very next fight against Esso and Kechizu, showing that the Sparks of Black had truly clung to Yuji and would continue to do so even after the Goodwill event. This is the limit of his growth in Season 1, and while it's absolutely insane, in the manga, Yuji's potential and growth gets even crazier. If you're a manga reader, or even just someone that has seen what happened in the Shibuya incident arc, you would know that this trend of monstrous evolution simply doesn't stop for Yuji. The Grasshopper Curse, Choso, Mahito, all of these fights show off Yuji's combat strength and potential in one way or another. Versus the Grasshopper, Yuji's overwhelming speed and strength shines through in his domination of the semi-grade 1 curse. Being so fast, so strong, and so skilled in his close quarters combat that he's able to easily trump the limb advantage that the Grasshopper has against him. Against Choso, in spite of his loss, Yuji showed off ridiculous resilience both mentally and physically, reacting to and dodging one of the fastest attacks we've seen in the series thus far, and pushing Choso to the utmost limits of his strength while only landing a handful of blows himself. And against Mahito, well against Mahito, we saw possibly the most growth in Yuji up to this point. Mentally, this fight with Mahito scarred and hardened Yuji, not only growing him as a character, but also giving him an opportunity to show off his tactical and methodical side. Physically, Yuji showed that when it counts, when the chips are down and you need to put an enemy down, when you need to get rid of a curse, Yuji will show up and the sparks of black will show up with him. Pulling off three black flashes in this fight and finally defeating the cursed spirit 
which had tormented and antagonized him so much, Yuji in his fight with Mahito, Yuji in chapter 132 showed that without a shadow of a doubt, when you need him, he will show up. The trauma, the suffering and torment all piled on by Mahito and Sukuna in Shibuya created a character that a special grade curse like Choso considered a demon god. Through his struggle and through his strife, Yuji became a warrior that had honed his ability to a razor point. Yuji had become a sorcerer, finally capable of realizing a tiny portion of his potential. Since Choso's statement though, since we had gotten the demon god statement from Choso, we hadn't really seen Yuji act like the demon god all that much. We hadn't really seen Yuji show off the potential that got the attention of Gojo Satoru. Until now. Chapter 214 marked the return of Yuji as a monstrous opponent as a demon god, if you were to quote Choso. For so long, I and many other fans of the series had been waiting for him to get stronger, waiting for him to evolve and to grow to the next level, waiting for him to finally become strong enough to get in the ring with the big dogs. And based on what we've seen in this most recent chapter, it seems that explosive sorcerer-like growth is starting to rear its head once again. Chapter 214 starts off with Yuji coming off the heels of an absolutely devastating blow from Stukuna. He stands and watches as Angel falls onto the ground after a surprise attack from the King of Curses. And as he enters the fray once more, it's clear that something has changed. Something has snapped in Yuji, creating a scene that in my mind is very reminiscent of him becoming enraged at Mahito, both when Junpei was killed and when Mahito had just killed Nanami right in front of him. This rage has always led to explosive speed and power. We've seen that time and time again in the series, but it seems different here. With the mere force of his jump, Yuji was able to decimate the portion of the building he was standing on, and his movements even surprised Sukuna. Sukuna is taken aback by this enormous wave of strength at first, before realizing that Yuji was from back then, and proceeds to call Kenjaku twisted in his mind. I want to address what Tsukuna could possibly be referring to in a little bit, but first I want to talk about how Yuji's power seems to have skyrocketed along with his resolve. In chapters 212 and 213, to me he seems much more docile and scared in the presence of Tsukuna's overwhelming evil. He seemed to be more surprised, more unaware, and simply put, he seemed more normal. But in this chapter, Yuji's power seems to have come from the fact that he is resolving himself to never be consumed by Sukuna's malice again. This is actually the first time in the series, since chapter 12 of the manga, that Yuji gets to go up against Sukuna with everything he has in a direct physical confrontation. Upon realizing once more that Sukuna is simply a curse, something that can't be reasoned with with the morals of humanity, Yuji starts to march forward in the face of Sukuna's slashing attacks. And no matter how much damage they do, no matter how much suffering is caused, no matter how much pain he feels, Yuji Itadori will not stop. He will never stop. And in a moment that simply had to feel cathartic for him, he cocks his arm back and hits Sukuna with all of his might, closing out the chapter. Now, in case my opinion on 214 wasn't already clear, let me spell it out. This chapter was phenomenal. I can say that I wholeheartedly wasn't expecting Yuji to be back in the game so fast against Sukuna, but I can also say that in spite of me not expecting it, and in spite of me not thinking that it would be possible, I am happy that it happened this way because this moment has exceeded all of my potential expectations for what could have happened in this chapter. I thought Maki, Takaba, maybe even Yuta would come back and be the ones to hold off Sukuna's rampage of evil, but this... This works so well. So many themes and ideas are called back to in this one moment, and so much growth happens on Yuji's part that 
it's actually insane. Obviously, people are really focused on the massive strength boost that he got, and rightfully so. This was a massive change for Yuji in the overall scope of the Jujutsu Kaisen world, because although he doesn't necessarily have the showings to fully back this up, I wouldn't be surprised at all if Yuji has achieved a level of strength similar to that of Toji in Maki. His display of raw power with that single jump is just ridiculous, and when you consider the fact that Sukuna considered his strength and durability in this chapter off the charts and abnormal, even though he has the context of how strong Yuji already was, it puts into perspective how insane of a boost Gege just gave our main character. You need to consider that Sukuna was genuinely caught off guard by the speed and strength of Yuji. Now, in spite of all this, in spite of all the hype and the meathead thoughts of Yuji's strength running through my mind, the one thing that I enjoyed the most was that switch being flipped in Yuji. It's something that we have seen time and time again in the series, and time and time again, no matter how many times Gege pulls it out, I get goosebumps and just lose my mind whenever it happens. When Yuji just breaks, when his threshold gets crossed, when he no longer can contain himself, and we really see him unable to control himself emotionally and mentally, I feel like we get the demon to show up within him. Not just in terms of strength, but in terms of mindset and mental fortitude. Yuji genuinely questions why Sukuna can't just live a peaceful, normal life, and while this question is directed towards Sukuna technically, I think this question is much larger than him. It's much larger than even a character as prominent and powerful as Sukuna. The question supersedes that. It's why must curses like Sukuna continue to kill, hurt, and destroy? Mahito, Kenjaku, the grasshopper curse, even Sukuna himself, why must these beings exist before him and the rest of humanity? Why must these creatures exist for the purpose of causing others suffering? To me, Yuji may be arriving at a conclusion that is similar to the one that Yuki had years ago. Subconsciously, I think Yuji is starting to resent the idea of this curse cycle conceptually in a way that he didn't before. Now, what I'm about to say next is merely me speculating, but I feel like the difference between Yuji when he was looking down on Mahito and Yuji as he's facing Sukuna now is that before he simply accepted the cycle as something that could not be changed, only participated in. When he defeated Mahito, I feel like he was merely accepting his role in this cursed cycle and declaring that he will be a piece that allows it to continue. But now, now it feels to me that Yuji is refusing to abide by this cycle anymore. When Yuji told Sukuna to try to chew him up in his suffering, that was a challenge to the very workings of cursed energy and curses to try to put him down. In my mind, Yuji is merely steps away from truly awakening and transcending this cyclical pain and suffering in the same way that Gojo did in the past. In the same way that Gojo truly didn't want to take vengeance on Toji, but simply felt like he was alone in this world as the honored one, I feel like Yuji may strike upon a similar mindset, although it may show itself in a bit more of an altruistic way. He doesn't possess the same insane curse technique combination of the six size and limitless the same way that Gojo did, but I think Kenjaku's construction of Yuji's body is a huge unknown factor that is allowing for this insane potential and this fierce growth. And while I can't say for sure what time period Sukuna means when he says back then, based on every endgame level threat coming from or existing in the Heian era, it's safe to say that some aspects of what makes Yuji Yuji came from the golden age of sorcerers. I'll be the first to admit, I could be wildly off the mark with this. Sukuna could be referring to some completely different period of time, but personally, the Heian period seems to be a reoccurring thing with Gege, so that is where I'm going to safely place my bets. And if Sukuna, the king of curses and destroyer of hundreds, if not thousands of lives is saying that Kenjaku is twisted for what he did, I can only imagine what horrendous actions needed to be taken in order to create something like Yuji. It's either that, or Yuji is the byproduct of Kenjaku's sick and twisted sense of humor that we saw in his fight against Choso and Yuki. The same humor that would allow him to laugh 
if all of his hard work, all of his effort, if the millennia of planning and scheming all turned out to create a big joke, that is the potential humor we may be looking at from Kinjaku. And in that case, Yuji's origins are potentially even more dubious and suspect than they were before. But whatever the reason, whatever the cause, I think Yuji is close to getting it. Maybe it is Sukuna's techniques, as many have theorized. Maybe it is the core of cursed energy, like Gojo and Nobara touched on. Or maybe it is the enlightenment and self-fulfillment that we saw Gojo achieve when everything was stripped from him but himself. No matter what you think is going to happen, it's clear to me that Yuji is going to hit on something big soon. The motivation is there, the potential is there, and the mindset is nearly there as well. Now I think Gege will throw a wrench in this like he always does with every good event that happens. I don't necessarily think this will be a straight up win for Yuji and his allies, and I do think some sacrifices will need to be made, but I do think that Yuji has shown his ability to prevail against all odds time and time again, and I have faith that Gege is inching ever closer to allowing Yuji to fully realize and blossom into the sorcerer that we know and Gojo knows he has the potential to be. Whether that be with or without Tsukuna's cursed techniques, I think Yuji is displaying a type of power that should be respected by the audience, and soon enough, power that should be feared by all those who oppose him.